In this lesson, we're going to focus on the color correction effects in After Effects. And why would I single out color correction? Well, there are two reasons. One, I think that color correction should be a part of all video production workflows. I'm a real believer in color correction. I've done full courses on color correction, and I want to make sure that I give you at least a flavor for how color correction works inside After Effects. And two, there is a very powerful, full-featured color correction product built into After Effects that a lot of folks just don't even know exists, and I want to show that to you at least give you a feeling for how it works and point you in that direction. So to follow along, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and open up 1305 Color Correction. We've got a couple of folks here, the Watermelon Harvest and these girls running. Sold that for a second, there they are. We're gonna do some color correction on both of them, whether they need it or not, but they both need a little bit of tweaking. Let's go down to Color Correction here inside the Effects and Presets panel, and you'll see there are plenty of so-called color correction effects. Now I'm here to tell you they're not all color correction effects, but they're definitely color-oriented effects. When you talk about color correction, color correction is a two-step process in general. The first step is to adjust tonality, that's brightness and contrast, and the second step is to adjust overall color cast. And then there are many other possibilities after those stages, but those are the two main things you do when you do color correction. And we're going to do both of those in this lesson. And if you look at these guys, hardly any of them have anything to do with tonality or color cast. They're just color related or tonality related. Let me just run down here and show some of the fun things in here, and then we'll move on to some of the more practical things. I like the change to color effect. I've talked about that before. It allows you to pick a color from the image and change it to something else. That's pretty much fun. I like that. I also like working with the colorama. It allows you to create some absolutely wild color schemes. The output cycle has some presets, which are really helpful. Let's say you go down to oh, fire, for example. Wow, look at that. So colorama is a fun thing to work with. And then down here, there's something called tritone and vibrance. Tritone is like tint, but tint doesn't let you have full contrast. If you apply tint, you'll see what I mean. You have black being mapped to some color and white being mapped to some color. And when you do that, you automatically knock down the contrast. It means that you really can't have a full contrast of brights to blacks. So tint is in many ways kind of a worthless effect. But tritone comes to the rescue because it has three choices. You can leave highlights being mapped to white and shadows being mapped to black. So you keep the full contrast here. Then you just pick a color in the middle to be the overriding color that you'll end up having with the tritone like that. So that's the good thing about tritone. You still have the full contrast, plus you have a color cast to it. That's how tritone works. As far as vibrance works, vibrance is also a pretty cool effect because when you want to raise the saturation, make the colors richer, if you use saturation like this, it tends to blow some colors out. If I take it to 100, for example, you see how the blue got blown out there and the red got blown out? I'm going to put vibrance on there again, do another instance of it, and I'm going to take vibrance to 100, and we'll switch back and forth. Here's vibrance to 100, and notice how the blue is not blown out and the red is not blown out, but you go over here to saturation being blown up, and you notice how those guys are just too extreme, the colors are too much. So vibrance kind of keeps things under control. No matter where you go, it never lets any one color get too saturated. So vibrance is a good thing to do when you want to just add a little bit of more color richness to your product. So that's a rundown on the kind of not truly color correction effects, but at least they're not really what I would call color correction effects. There are a bunch of other things here that you might want to try out. As far as the color correction goes, the automatic things up here would be the typical color correction stuff. If you want to do auto contrast, you drag that over there and it suddenly adjusts the contrast automatically, which I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of auto anything. You don't have a product like After Effects if you want to do things automatically, at least I think. Auto levels, same kind of a thing, very similar to contrast. Then there's auto color where it tries to look at the overall color scheme and figure out what the proper color is, which doesn't work too badly there, but Check out what happens to the girls down below here. I'm going to drag auto color to them, and it just makes them look dull. It's just kind of weird because it balances things out and tries to remove some of the green because there's too much green as far as auto color is concerned. So auto stuff is not really something I'm all that big a fan of. You go down here and do brightness and contrast, which is not auto. And here you can do things like control brightness on your own or control contrast on your own, which is fine. If you want to do that, great. But my thinking is that you really should use a true color correction tool if that is your goal. And if you look at color correction, you're going to look for that amazing tool and it won't be there. That's why people don't find it. It's not inside color correction. It's down in this thing called synthetic aperture. Who would know, right? But inside synthetic aperture, there's something called SA Color Finesse 3. Let me open that up by just opening up here in this particular clip. 
And there you have it. And where is it, right? Well, there's a simplified interface here, and I'm going to open it up, and it won't look all that simplified, right? Oh my gosh, look at that stuff. You've got curves and you've got color wheels, okay. But more importantly, we can go to the full interface. Let's do that instead, because that is the real workhorse. And it essentially is a separate program. And to understand how this program works, you really need to look at the manual. Let me show you the manual. You can find the manual inside the After Effects folder if you drill down to plugins and then look for synthetic aperture, then you'll be able to find this user's guide. And the user's guide is 118 pages long. It has a lot of stuff in here, and it talks about how to use Color Finesse to its fullest capability. It is a great product, and it comes with After Effects and lets you do a full range of color correction. All I'm going to do here is just introduce it to you. There's no way I could teach this whole product in just a couple of minutes. So let's go back now to Color Finesse. The two main things you want to do with color correction is to adjust tonality and then color. And the way you adjust tonality is by using curves. And you can determine how well you're adjusting tonality by looking at a waveform monitor. Here's the waveform monitor. I'm going to open it up at full by going to Luma waveform monitor there. And I want to be able to work with curves. So I go down here to curves. And I'm going to work with the master curve, not the rest of the guys, just with master, where I'm dealing with red, green, and blue all at once. And I'm looking at this waveform monitor, and it shows the luma values, the luminance or the brightness from left to right. So you can see that it's a little bit brighter in the middle. The white shirt here shows up right there. This guy's white hat here shows up right about there. That's the bright area. Down here, it's dark. You can see the overall quality of this clip is that it's kind of dark. Down here at the bottom is black at zero IRE, it's called. And the top, that's 100, that's the brightest area. And there's barely anything fully bright here. It's kind of a dark clip. So we want to lift up the luma. We don't want to bring the black down, but we want to lift the white up. So if we were to bring the black down, we go down here to the bottom left-hand corner of the curves and drag that point down there to the right, and that'll bring down the blacks. But we don't want to do that in this case. We don't want to lift them up either, because we do want to have black touching the zero IRE line. So we leave that alone, basically. But I do need to lift up the highlights. They're barely touching the 100 line. I need to bring up more highlights. You do that by clicking up here and dragging to the left, and that lifts the highlights. You watch the top of the screen, you see some of these guys just now pushing into the 100 line, and that's what you want. You want just a little bit of stuff pressing up against the 100 line, and now you've got enough highlights and enough shadows to fill the full range of brightness values. Now what you need to do is kind of lift the midtones a little bit, just to kind of add overall brightness to the image. You do that by clicking in the middle here and just kind of dragging up a little bit, not much. And you can eyeball it over here, but you can also see that you're spreading out the values a bit here, and that's your goal. That's step one. Step two now is to deal with color. You deal with color on the HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Luma, clicking on this to get there, and then clicking on Hue Offsets, and you get these color wheels. And the color wheels allow you to adjust the color cast. If there is kind of a general color cast to an image, you can use this to adjust it. And to see this in action, to see it with a scope, you go to the vector scope. The vector scope shows you color cast. Notice how it's red here, green here, and blue here. Look at this scope. Red up on the top, green down here, blue here. It matches the scope here. This color wheel and the scope match each other. So right now the scope indicates we've got kind of a little bit toward blue and cyan, a little bit heading that way, because there's a lot of green in the image. There's a lot of the kind of bluish green foliage there. So that's logical that it's that way. But we can pull it a little bit toward the red and the orange and the yellow, just a little bit. By clicking on the center here and pulling it just a little bit that way. And notice how we're moving that scope around. See it move there? Move it a little bit, and I think that ends up being pretty good. So we click OK, we're done. And you see the difference. There is the after, there's the before. After, before. Whether it's perfect or not, I just want to show you how it's done. Let's go to the girls and do them. And we'll just show you how to do this one more time to kind of nail it home. This image has lousy contrast, so we really need to fix this. So we're going to go over there and Drag Color Finesse to them, open up its full interface, and do the same routine as before. Take care of tonality first by going to the Luma Waveform Monitor, switching over here to Curves. You can see now that we have no blacks and hardly any highlights, we need to bring the blacks down so we get some more contrast, more tonality. So I'm going to drag the blacks to the right here to bring them down to the zero line, right like that, just so they touch the line. And right away, look at the image. It's beginning to pop right off the bat, looks great. Now we're going to lift up the highlights just a little bit, not too much, just to get a couple highlights, just touching the top 100 IRE line there. That's good. 
Now we might want to adjust the midtones, but the midtones are pretty well spread out here. It's pretty much, I think, working well. We might even want to bring them down a little bit, just a touch. There we go. So now we've got the tonality taken care of. That's the first step. And many times that's the only step you need to do. But let's go to HSL anyway. Click on HSL, make sure that the hue offsets are selected here. Let's take a look at the vector scope. You can see that it's leaning toward red and yellow, a little bit away from blue. I want to pull it just a little bit toward blue to kind of center it up just a little bit like this to kind of take some of that red and yellow out. Make it more natural, although people do like things to look warm, meaning orange. But I think that's more properly natural there. And now we click OK. There is the after. Oh, that looks great. And this is the before. What a difference. So there you go. That's just a basic look at the color correction effects with my admonition that if you want to do color correction right, you really need to dive into color finesse.